Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Wyatt Goolsby in for Lauren Ashburn. The woman known as Jane Roe in the Roe versus Wade decision that legalized abortion has died. Norma McCorvey went from being an abortion advocate to a pro-life Catholic. Mark Irons brings us her story from the Supreme Court tonight. Mark. Why, in 1973, the decision that legalized abortion took place here. It's not something that Norma McCorvey was proud of. In a statement, her family said, quote, though she was the Jane Roe of Roe versus Wade, she worked hard for the day when that decision would be reversed. In 1969, Norma McCorvey was 22 years old. Unmarried, unemployed, and pregnant with her third child, she began to hear about abortion. I really didn't even know what the word abortion meant. I, I had to go and ask uh, a friend, and she spelled it for me and, and told me to look it up in the dictionary. I, I still didn't understand it. Abortion was illegal in Texas, except to save a mother's life. In her book, I Am Roe, Norma says an adoption attorney put her in touch with Sarah Weddington, a Texas lawyer who was seeking to represent a woman to challenge the state's abortion law. The two met over lunch. She got taken advantage of uh, over a, a pizza lunch, basically, to sign some papers, and, uh, and she didn't think anything of it. I mean, she went on to then have the baby. Sarah Weddington couldn't help her in that short of time and uh, place the baby for adoption. So she was definitely taken advantage of. Janet Morana, executive director of Priests for Life, became friends with Norma in the mid-90s. She says the woman known as Roe found out about the 1973 Supreme Court decision in a Dallas newspaper. By that time, she had already given birth to her third child, a daughter, and gave her up for adoption. Norma McCorvey never had an abortion but her court case legalized abortions across the country. We forgive you in Jesus' yeah. name. Yes. You are forgiven. In 1995, Norma was baptized a Christian and made the switch from abortion advocate to pro-life fighter. We are here to proclaim that Jane Roe is dead and Norma McCarvey lives in Jesus' name. In 1998, she was confirmed into the Catholic faith, telling the Associated Press that year, I don't believe in abortion even in an extreme situation. If the woman is impregnated by a rapist, it's still a child. You're not to act as your own God. In 2005, the Supreme Court rejected McCorvey's challenge to the Roe versus Wade ruling, but Morana says Norma would hope the pro-life movement can one day reverse the decision. Just the way she was taken advantage of, she feels like the abortion industry continues to exploit women, and she would like to see the, ex the stop the killing of the children and stop the exploitation of women, I think. Norma McCorvey formed her own group, Row No More Ministry, in 1997. She traveled across the country speaking out against abortions. McCorvey died on Saturday of heart failure. She was in an assisted living center outside of Houston. McCorvey was 69 years old. Wyatt. Mark Irons reporting from outside the Supreme Court. Thanks, Mark. Joan Lewis, EWTN's Rome Bureau Chief, met Norma McCorvey and heard her story firsthand. Joan now joins us from Rome. Joan, how did you meet Norma McCorvey and what struck you about her? Well, we met in 2013 when a whole bunch of us were in New York to mark the 20th anniversary of Priest for Life with Father uh, Frank Pavone. And we had three or four days together sharing meals, breakfast, lunch and dinner. A and I heard her entire story from her difficult childhood to the point in, of course, we have said that she is the Roe of the Roe v. Wade decision in 1973 at the Supreme Court that, that legalized abortion. And um, her life was very difficult up to that time. She was very young. She was in her uh, third pregnancy, an unwanted pregnancy. She was trying to figure out what to do because, of course, abortion was not legal in the States. And these lawyers came along and said they would help her. This is the part of the story that struck me more than anything else in talking to her. These lawyers said they would try and help her, help her through the pregnancy. Well, the long and short of it is she really was deceived, misled by these lawyers. She never had an abortion herself, and she never even went to court. But before she knew it, you've got the Supreme Court case decided, the Supreme Court siding on the side of abortion and it became illegal uh, it became legal in 1973 so to see her anguish at something she thought was just going to be lawyers helping her in a personal decision become something that affected our entire country and she lived with that anguish for such a long time
Joan, what do you think led her to change her mind about abortion and become part of the pro-life movement from a spiritual point of view? Actually, I'll tell you what it was. Here, she was working to help people with abortions. She was familiar with doctor's offices. She herself was in her third pregnancy. One day, she's in a doctor's office, and she sees a chart on the wall, and it was a fetal development chart. And she looked at it and just, like, had this epiphany of, oh, my gosh, I've had three children. I've, uh, I've been there when abortions uh, were, were taking place, illegal, of course. But she said, all of a sudden, I realized this was human life. Abortion was the deliberate taking of a human life in the womb of a mother. And, and so when she realized that, she then dedicated the rest of her life to o trying to overturn the decision that she had been instrumental in, in helping the court pass in 1973. So uh, faith became a very big part of her life. She was baptized as an adult. Father Frank Pavone brought her into the Catholic Church, confirmed her. Um, in 1998, and then she spent years giving talks and being part of the March for Life, trying to overturn that dreadful Roe v. Wade decision. It's a pretty profound story uh, after a pretty profound life. Joan Lewis, EWTN's Rome Bureau Chief, thanks so much for talking with exactly. us. Exactly. My pleasure.